Hello YouTube, hope you guys are doing great. Welcome to my video tutorial series on Google Tag Manager. So in this video, we'll start towards learning about Google Tag Manager and what exactly it is. So once you are aware of that, we'll proceed towards learning the problem that led to creation of a tag management system like Google Tag Manager. So it's very important to understand the history if you're trying to understand or learn a new product. So once we learn that, then we'll proceed towards learning the two key components that make up Google Tag Manager. So that's a tag and second thing is the trigger. So it's very crucial to understand these concepts clear cut if you need to understand Google Tag Manager. And once we understand that, then we'll try to implement Google Tag Manager's container on your website. So I'll show you the process of how to do that. So it's quite an easy process and I'll take you through all the steps needed step by step. With that said, let's jump into the video. You want to add third party functionality on your website that isn't built into your website's main code. So how do you do that? To do that, you actually approach various third parties and those third parties share your snippet of code that they need you to implement in your website. So I'm sharing your typical, you know, example of how this interaction usually happens. Let's take an example wherein you want to implement Google Analytics. So how do you implement that? You get its code and ask your developer to implement it. So your developer is, you know, uh, there to implement your code and he implements the code on your website. Now, another day you realize that you need to retarget your Facebook ads. So what do you do is you navigate towards your Facebook ad manager generate its pixel and you again ask your developer to implement it. However, now your developer is working on a critical code change. So he tells you, you know, that this code will be deployed in the next two gates. So this code gets deployed, but there's a delay of two days as your developer was busy and he was working on a critical feature. Now you want to track how the users are really experiencing your site with the help of heat maps. So, you know, you want to implement a tool that is called as Hotjar. So you get its code and you reach back to your development team to implement it. Now your main developer, your lead developer is on a leave. So you share this code with a junior developer. Now he implements the code. However, this code, you know, he doesn't ensure that this code loads a sync. The feature is now implemented. However, it has started to impact your website's load times. So, you know, I hope you've understood the problem. And now we'll start learning about Google Tag Manager and how Google Tag Manager actually solves these problems. If this video has added some value, please don't forget to like and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Google Tag Manager is a tag management system that allows you to centrally manage all the tags that are implemented in your website's head section in an efficient manner. So that's actually a pretty big statement. So let's break it up. So at first, you know, Tag Manager allows you to centrally manage. So what do I mean by that? You know, you only implement Google Tag Manager's code in your website head section and all the other snippets of code are implemented on your website via Google Tag Manager. So whether it's your Facebook pixel or whether it's your, you know, Google Ads pixel or analytics tag, you know, all of them can be implemented via Google Tag Manager. Now, second most important thing to notice, it's only used to manage the code that goes in your website's head section. So, you know, people try to implement even the HTML that goes inside the body section. So some tags from some particular servers like Google Ad Manager, they also contain body code that contains a divide. So those particular tags, please note, cannot be implemented via Google Tag Manager. It's, it's only used to implement the snippets of code that goes in your website head section and thirdly uh, all of these things are managed by google tag manager in an efficient manner so what do i mean by that i mean that you know by using google tag manager there isn't a need for you to update your website's code again and again so once your google tag manager's container that is like just your tags and triggers is deployed on your website all the other snippets of code can be deployed on your website 
without making any changes in your website's code. So this is a very important thing that allows even non-developers to implement snippets of code and this gives your team flexibility to you know uh, work with Google Tag Manager. Tags are segments of code provided by the various third party vendors to you for whom you want to integrate the third party functionality. These tags might be from Facebook, from Google Ads, from Hotjar or from any other third party vendor. So it's important to note that you know Tag Manager natively supports many of these third party tags you know you can see in here. However, if your tag isn't supported, you might use a custom tag. Custom tags may be used to you know implement the tags that are not yet supported natively by Google Tag Manager. So you can do that via custom tags. Also, there's an option to use in the custom HTML directly. So there's a custom HTML tag wherein you can directly input the script that you get from the client and you know you're all good to go with that. Tags fire in response to events. So in Google Tag Manager, a trigger listens to all the events on your web page. So whether it's your form submission, whether it's your page view, whether it's a click. So trigger will listen to all the events on your page and it will decide when should we fire that particular tag. Each tag must be associated with a particular trigger or else it would never fire. So a tag without a trigger is actually pretty useless. Triggers are also something that helps to speed up your websites. So let me explain this to you. So traditionally, if you have a tag to implement, you'll directly implement it in your website's head section. And you know, it the JavaScript will load on your website all the times. However, with a tag management system like Google Tag Manager, you are only invoking that particular tag when a particular event happens or this trigger triggers. Open in your favorite web browser and that's Google for me and you can type in Google Tag Manager. So this is the first organic link that we get that says websites tag management and solutions and I'm clicking on this link. So once the website opens, uh, you'll get to know a little bit about, uh, you know, Tag Manager and it says start for free. So important thing to note is this tool is absolutely free of cost. Now you can simply sign into Tag Manager. So I am uh, signing in here and you'll be asked to authenticate through your gmail account so my gmail is already authenticated so i'll not get that pop-up once again as you only get it once now to get started i can simply click on create account so i will uh, you know have to enter in my company name so i'm simply typing in def selecting my country of origin so my country of origin is india so type in india and it comes in here now you can actually choose whether you want to share your data uh, anonymously to Google and others. So there's an option in here. So this uh, you can enable if you want and you know, I'm leaving this unchecked for now. And I am, you know, providing in my same name that I set up for the account for the container. So your container should be your site name. So inside your account, you can have several containers that depict several of your sites. Now inside the platform, I'm selecting in web in here. However, you can choose in Android and iOS. And uh, if you have an AMP website as well, so you can select an AMP and you can set your account for AMP. Also, it says, you know, there's a server option in, in, in here that is in beta. So I haven't experimented it and learned about it, but you can try to experiment and learn about this on your own. So I'm clicking on the create button. It asks me to accept this, uh, you know, service agreement. And I am, you know, also accepting this GDPR policies and I'm clicking in on the yes button. So with this uh, you know your google tag manager account would be created and yes that is how easy it is to actually create your google tag manager account now your account has been set up in the ui however to actually link it to your website we'll have to implement this code that i mentioned to you guys earlier that this one single snippet of code 
will control all the tags and triggers on your website so to do that you know we can simply click on this copy button and navigate towards the wordpress backend so uh, for my wordpress backend i'm going in appearance and i'm going in theme editor so we need to look up for a file that is called as header.php and if you guys uh, aren't aware of that so this actually file is common across all the you know template files across the wordpress so i am actually providing in header.php so our goal is to implement the head section that we got in here inside the head section of the website so head uh, section of the tag manager should be implemented in here so we are seeing the head section and i'm implementing my code in here so i'm simply copy pasting this so wait this copy paste didn't work yeah it worked so there was a delay now we will simply go ahead and you know uh, grab in the body code so i'm going in here and grabbing in my body code and this i'm implementing immediately after body so this is an important thing to note that you know they tell you to implement the code immediately after your body tag so ensure that you're implementing immediately after your body tag now that's it guys you can click on update file and this is it your tag manager has been implemented